manja manja friends welcome back today we're going to be making la chambella sorana it is a round donut shaped bread with anise seed in it there's just simply five ingredients and we're going to get started on that as soon as we remind you to smash that like button leave a comment nice turn on that notification bell and subscribe to marisa's cucina italiana now we can get started and here are the ingredients all right here we are now you need a nice bowl okay i'm going to use a transparent one so you can see we have 562 grams of flour we have two tablespoons of anise seed one and a half teaspoons of salt we have two and a half grams of fresh yeast but you could use a quarter teaspoon of the dry yeast no problem and 250 grams or one cup of the warm water which i have heated at to 110 okay here are the five simple ingredients okay let's get started then we're going to put our flour in and i'm going to add the two tablespoons of aniseed. If you find that it's a little strong for you, you can half it, put one tablespoon in. Uh, we kind of like that aniseed taste. And what I'm gonna do is just give that a mix so that it mixes through the uh, all the flour. Okay. Now, the only thing I don't add right now is the salt. I'm gonna put that in just at the end. I am putting in, see, I'm not, the unusual thing is, well, you don't have to put this in the water and proof it. All I do is, if this was the dry, just add it in, okay? And the next thing we're going to do is add in our salt. Add it, I add, add it at the edge so that it doesn't mix with the yeast really fast. Okay, salt and yeast just don't go together. Okay, so I'm just gonna help myself right now with this little spatula okay and as you can see five ingredients in the pan and i'm gonna let it pick it up now i don't put this in a mixer you could put it in a hook mixer if you have the professional kitchen aid this gets this dough is a very thick dough it wants to be uh really really worked and once you pick up pretty much all this flour probably a tablespoon or two will be left over as you can see i'm kneading it in here for for easiness okay pretty simple but i want to pick up all the flour okay as much as i can because the dough has to be a very nice tough dough so the remaining I'm gonna try to put that in here like this and try to start kneading it in here. Okay. Oh. All right, let's see. Okay. See how that is? Nice in it. If you need a little bit more water, by all means, add it in if you want to. But like I say, I, I like this to be dry, okay? And then depends on the day. Today is a warm day here in Sora. Some days it's more humid. So you're, depend what climate you're in, you could use a little bit more water or a little bit less water, okay? All right, let's say that this dough, as you can see, it's nice and when you put your fingers in, it doesn't come up, okay? So it's not spongy. I will get maybe a drop of water, just a little bit. There you go. All right, there. Then what you do is, if it gets a little bit more wet, because you know, see, your board, it's not really sticking on me either, okay? That's it. So after I've kneaded this for a little bit, I will be back and uh, give you the rest of the instructions on what to do. Okay, so these 10 minutes have gone by. And of course, just to show you how I do it, I turn the bread around, I go one way, then once I've turned it, I turn it the other way. And your aniseed will come out, so don't worry. See my little mound over here? Like I said, I've been kneading this for 10 minutes. And all we wanna do after is 
trying to make it round, grab the bottom, turn it, and make a little round dough. And very simply, with no, again, no oil, no flour, all you're going to do is put it in a bowl. I like to make that little cross on top of it. So we'll get a knife out. And why I do this, it's a tradition. That's how I was taught to put the, the little cross on top and then you'll see that it raises a little. All we want to do with this now is cover it with, our, with a linen towel or a towel. And I'm going to put this in my oven to proof for uh, one hour. I'm going to put the timer on. I don't want it to go no, no further and not shorter. One hour. Then we'll go to the second process of it and show you what we do. Uh, how we make the little logs and shape them. All right, our hour has gone by, friends, and th that's all it needs is one hour. So we don't take that off, okay? And as you can see, the cross got a little bit bigger, not that much more, okay? And it's amazing, but you're just going to pull it out and it did not stick to the, to the pan, okay? And as you can see behind me, just to give you uh, what we say anti-brima, just a before picture, is we have the pot over there half filled with water because these are going to boil now as soon as we form them. So turn on your, uh, your, your pan. Okay, mine turned on. Okay, um, and that's going to come to a boil because these are going to be done pretty fast. As soon as they're done, we're going to put them on, um, when we've baked them, you'll see, we'll drain them on here, take them directly from here right onto the grill of the stove. You can put it on one of those square pizza pans with the holes in it if you like, but then you have to turn them, okay? But even these kind of sometimes you have to turn them to get them golden. And your oven is set at about 400, so these cook pretty fast, okay? From about 350 to 400. Alrighty then, let's get started here. We're going to, I'm going to make th uh, three little incisions on here because I want to make three. Normally I'll make four, but they're, they're too teeny, okay? So kind of eyeball it. And as you can see how beautiful that is inside. Okay, nice and soft. And the smell of the yeast is incredible. This one might be just a little too little. We'll add just a little piece to it. Okay, so then you just want to form it. No flowers needed, none at all. And as you can see, I kind of make them elongated. Okay. And then we're going to roll them with a small rolling pin. All right, here's the rolling pin. It's just a teeny one. You could use a normal one. I just happen to have this because you know me, I make a lot of cookies and stuff that I need it. So kind of get it to be about, I'd say a two inch, uh, size, take your rolling pin and roll it out. Don't worry if it's flat. These are going to get cooked in the oven. So, okay. And then what I do is kind of get my edges to be the same size. So cooking wise. So this is what you wind up with. Okay. Now about half an inch thick. Okay. Now, if this one I'm going to show you from far away. The second one I will do a close-up on how I make these orochiete, which are ears on the uh, ciambella. What I do is I take this part of my pulse and squish it and clip it to the center of the ciambella. Okay? It's just for prettiness, really, but these pieces cook a little bit more crocante, a little bit more crunchy, and so a lot of people like that, like myself. Then what I do is I make an incision at the end, an incision at this end, turn these up and overlap them so as to make the ciambella. And you just want to work it a little bit like this. And there it is. It's ready to go. This one is ready to go 
into the water. So I'm just going to place it over here on my rack. Now all I'll do is I'm going to show you one close up so you can see it uh, in a better situation, okay? Okay, so here's the close up one. Again, we're just going to roll it out, kind of don't get any air in there. You can feel it, it'll be hollow, so there you go. I'm going to make the round. Okay, my water's boiling, so I'm going to turn it down. It's ready to go. And again, if the aniseeds come out, don't worry. You can even stick them back on, but okay. Once we have about a two inch round, we take our rolling pin. Okay. And lightly flatten it out. At this point, if you just want to make them round and you don't want to make the the um, the roquete, the little ear on it, then don't worry. Leave them round like that and just put them together and boil them. That's fine. Okay. So I kind of want to make sure that we have a. Sometimes I even go in the center. Okay. All right. Now I take that part of my hand and twist it a little bit. Oops. It's okay. There you go. Twist it. This part, twist it. There you go. Okay. All right. To the end. Okay. Make sure that they're in. Take your knife, make the little slit on both ends. Lift that back up and connect connect your by overlapping it a little bit and just keep pressing it in there so it's in okay again there you go so we have it okay here's your boiling water okay very simple and i got i got a hold of a couple of like uh spatulas so that I can lift this up, okay? Once we put them in, boiling water, kind of rapid boil. Be real careful when you put it in, okay? And what I do is I kind of move it around and then I leave it because it'll come, it'll raise up, all right? Once it raises up, then we'll pull it right out, okay? So it's uh, still cooking. It takes a few minutes. You don't want it longer than that. As soon as it pops up, we're ready to take it out, okay? All right. Yeah. That's why the water boil should boil. Okay, there it is. It's, it's coming up. It just lifts from the bottom, and you'll see it. It lifts from the bottom, okay? This kind of seals it like the bagel, but uh, just to give it the shine. And then I pull it out very carefully because at this point it kind of it gets a little bit more mushy. And place it on my rack and add the next one. Again, work it a little bit. Okay, we're going to continue that and then we'll be, we'll be back to show you how we put them right into the oven. Okay, I take a little bit of that boiling water that we had and I'm going to put it inside the oven so that, that those vapors will help uh, make the chambella crunchy. As you can see over here, these are the chambellas that we did. And all I'm going to do is pull out my rack and I'm going to place them on my rack. You'll hear a little bit of sizzling give them a twist like i say you can put these on a on a, a tin but they won't come nice and colored on the bottom all right so my oven is a 220 which is probably about 375 uh maybe even 400 and we will be back and show you the process that they're doing okay just to show you step by step these are really getting really nice and uh, colored on the top. So what I do is I just turn them over, okay? I can't reach that one, but uh, my hands are... Uh, there you go. Now we'll color the other side. And they're all... 
And when they're golden brown, let's take them out. That was about 15 minutes. Every oven is different. Hi friends. Oh, the smell in this house is just incredible. Uh, again, they came out beautiful. They're still warm. They smell lovely. We're going to cut one open to show you. And normally these are how they're served. They're served with a little bit of salami, a little bit of cheese, a nice little glass of wine. But um, we're going to take one and we're going to cut one open. See how beautiful they came. Very crocante. Okay, so let's just move this over and show you. I'll use a serrated knife and we'll cut one open. Listen to that. Oh, they're so warm still. But when they're warm like this, they're, they're good. And so I like to open them up. beautiful. Mm. There's those little holes I was telling you about, okay? See the little holes in the middle? That means that it's raised and it's raised very good, okay? It really is too warm to eat. I mean, it's delicious. I would eat it right now, but it is a little too warm. But thank you for watching. Remember to smash that like button, leave the comment, very nice, or if you need any help, turn on that bell, the notification bell, and subscribe to Marisa's Cucina Italiana. And I hope you enjoyed this little uh, adventure here of La Ciambella Sorana. I have, and I hope you have too. Okay, and as I always say, manja manja. Bye friends of the manja manja group.